All right, let's dive in. Today, we're exploring the world of quantum computing stocks. Really fascinating stuff. It is. And, you know, our listener is super interested in maybe investing in this tech. So they've sent us a bunch of articles and analyses. Yeah. So we're going to go through all that and try to help them figure out uh, what's going on with these quantum computing stocks. Yeah, it's a really exciting field. And uh, I think there's a lot of potential for growth. Yeah. And so for people who need a quick refresher, you know, regular computers are like bicycles. And quantum computers are like spaceships. Yeah, that's a good analogy. They operate on completely different principles. Right. And quantum computers can tackle problems that are impossible for even the, the biggest supercomputers we have today. Exactly. And, you know, traditional computers use bits, which can be either zero or one. Right. But quantum computers use qubits, which can be zero, one, or both simultaneously. Right. And that's because of uh, the principles of quantum mechanics. Oh, yeah. This lets them perform calculations at incredible speeds. So that speed can help us solve problems that are just beyond our reach right now. Absolutely. But we want to talk about investing in this tech. Yeah. Where should we start? Well, a good place to begin is with what we might call the uh, safe bets. Okay. These are like the big tech companies that have tons of resources and are investing heavily in quantum computing. So even if the uh, quantum revolution takes a little longer than expected, these companies are probably going to be fine because of everything else they do. Exactly. But the fact that they are investing in quantum computing is a big signal. For sure. They see this as the future. Absolutely. So who are we talking about here? We're talking about companies like IBM, Alphabet, Microsoft, and Amazon. The big players. Yeah, the heavy hitters in the tech industry. And they're leading the charge in developing quantum hardware and software platforms. Yeah. Okay, let's look at each one of those. Okay. Starting with IBM, what are their key quantum initiatives? Well, you know, IBM has been a pioneer in quantum computing for decades, actually. They've developed IBM Quantum, which is a platform that provides cloud-based access to their quantum computers. Ooh, okay. And then they also have Quiskit, which is a software development kit. Hmm. And that allows researchers and developers to create and run quantum algorithms. So they're trying to build a community around it and encourage people to use it? Exactly. They're taking an open source approach. That's smart. Now, Google, uh, they made headlines a while back with their claim of quantum supremacy. Yeah, that was a big milestone. What was that? Well, Google's quantum AI division is focused on building these fault-tolerant quantum computers okay. and developing algorithms for various applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have this willow chip right. that can perform calculations in minutes that would take a traditional supercomputer billions of years. Wow, that's incredible. It's a huge leap forward in processing power. And it sounds like Google is really pushing the limits. Yeah, they're really at the forefront of research. What about Microsoft? What are they doing? Well, Microsoft has kind of adopted a cloud-centric strategy. Okay. They have Azure Quantum, which is a service that provides access to a variety of quantum computing hardware and software. Oh, so they're working with different providers. Yeah, from different providers. Interesting. So this allows businesses to experiment with and utilize quantum computing without having to build their own infrastructure. It's like a marketplace for quantum computing. Right. And so it makes it easier for companies to get started. Yeah, to kind of dip their toes in the water. Okay. And lastly, we have Amazon. What's their approach? Well, Amazon uh, has AWS Bracket, which is a cloud-based platform. Mm -hmm. It gives users access to quantum computers from providers like IonQ and Rigetti, which we'll talk about later. Okay. This allows users to explore different quantum computing technologies and choose what works best for their needs. So it's like a try before you buy. Exactly. For quantum computing. Interesting. And so, you know, it's really fascinating to see how these big companies are making this powerful technology accessible. Right. Through the cloud. Right. It's not exclusive to research labs and governments anymore. Right. Businesses and individuals can now tap into this incredible power. And that's what has investors excited. Exactly. Yes. This huge potential for growth. Yeah. But let's move beyond these giants. You mentioned IonQ and Rigetti. Yeah. Those are, I guess, a different category. Yeah. These are great examples of what we call mid-cap stocks. In the quantum computing world. Exactly. So smaller than the giants, but they're completely focused on quantum computing. Right. So they're like the growth stocks in yeah. this new frontier with potential for high returns, but maybe also higher risk. Exactly. These companies are betting their future on quantum computing. It's a bold move. It is, but it's also really exciting yeah full of possibilities let's dive deeper into these mid-cap players okay starting with ionq what makes them unique well 
IonQ specializes in what's called trapped ion quantum computing. Okay. And they've partnered with all three major cloud providers we just talked about. AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure. That's impressive. Yeah. It shows that the industry is taking IonQ's technology seriously. Mm -hmm. And beyond those partnerships, they have a good track record in research and development. Yes, absolutely. It seems like they're not just playing around in a lab. No, they're actively trying to create solutions businesses can use. And that's what drives stock value ultimately. For sure. Delivering on promises and showing real world applications. Okay, now tell me about Rigetti Computing. Okay, so Rigetti is focused on developing superconducting quantum processors and these hybrid quantum classical systems. Okay. They really want to make quantum computing work for businesses. And it seems like that's a common theme here, making quantum computing practical and profitable. Absolutely. That's what everyone's striving for. What's interesting is that Rigetti's market cap is still kind of low compared to IonQ. Right. Does that mean they have more potential for growth? Potentially, yeah. Hmm. If Rigetti can deliver on their promises, right. their stock could really take off. Higher risk, higher reward. Exactly. Okay, the last mid-cap on our list is D-Wave Quantum. What's their approach? So D-Wave is doing something really interesting called quantum annealing. Okay. Imagine a complex landscape with peaks and valleys. Yeah. Quantum annealing is like finding the lowest point in that landscape, which is the best solution to a problem. Okay. It's really good for optimization problems in areas like logistics and finance. So other companies are building general purpose quantum computers. Right. And D-Wave is more focused. Exactly. They're targeting specific types of problems. Interesting. And what's remarkable is they're already making money. Really? By working with companies in different industries. Yeah. They've even worked with companies like Volkswagen and Lockheed Martin. So they're further along than some of the other companies in terms of making money. Yeah, they have a proven track record. But does that mean their potential for growth is lower? That's a good question. Yeah. And it really depends on your investment strategy and how much risk you're willing to take. So maybe D-Wave is a more stable investment, but with less potential for explosive growth. Possibly, yeah. It's all about finding that balance. Right. Okay, we've talked about the safe bets and the growth stocks, mm -hmm. but there's another category. Yes, we haven't even talked about the uh, the really adventurous investments. Yeah. The low cap companies, they're like venturing into uncharted territory. Yo. The rewards could be huge, Wow. but so are the risks. Okay, I'm ready. Let's talk about low cap quantum computing stocks. All right, let's dive in. Where the stakes are high and the possibilities are endless. Exactly. So we've talked about those big companies and those uh, mid cap companies. Right. Now we're getting into the the really high risk, high reward. Deep end. Yeah, the low cap stocks. Companies with huge potential, but a lot more risk. Like we're moving from those big cities to like the Wild West. Yeah, exactly. You might find gold, but you also might, you know. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, so tell me about these companies. Well, one that's really interesting is Quantum Computing Inc., Q-U-B-T for short. Oh. And they're focusing on developing quantum software. So they're not building the computers themselves? No, they're making the tools for other people to use. Okay, so if the quantum computer is like this powerful spaceship, yeah. Q-U-B-T is building the navigation system. Exactly, yeah. Interesting. What kind of software are they making? Well, they have a bunch of different things. They have Dirac systems, reservoir computing, uh, remote sensing, single photon imaging, wow. even quantum random number generators. Mm -hmm. And they also do quantum authentication for cybersecurity. That's interesting. They're covering a lot of ground. They are, yeah. And I saw they got a contract with NASA. Yeah, that's huge. That's a pretty big deal, right? It, it is. It shows that their technology is being taken seriously. Like a stamp of approval. Exactly but it's still a small company. Oh, for sure. And there are risks. Yeah, investing in low cap companies is always risky, but if they can keep developing good software and getting more contracts like that one, right. their stock could really grow. It sounds like it could be a really good opportunity, but... But risky. Yeah. You gotta be careful. All right, let's move on to another company. Arkit Quantum, what are they doing? So Arkit is all about post-quantum encryption. What is that? So as quantum computers get more powerful, they could break the encryption we use today. Oh, wow. Our kit is building encryption that can withstand attacks from those powerful computers. So they're like future-proofing cybersecurity. Yeah, basically. That sounds really important. It is, and it's a huge market mm -hmm. because as quantum computers get better, everyone's going to need this. Governments, companies, everybody. Everyone, yeah. So our kit could become 
a leader in this new age of cybersecurity. Potentially, yeah. And if they do, big rewards. Huge rewards, but again, high risk. High risk, high reward. Right. All right, one more company, BTQ Technologies. What are they focused on? So BTQ, they're also in post-quantum cryptography. They're making sure that data stays secure as quantum computers get more powerful. So similar to our kit, but maybe with a different approach. Yeah, they're developing their own algorithms and protocols. So they're making sure that all our systems can handle this new quantum future. Exactly. They're trying to make the transition smooth. Okay, so this post-quantum cryptography. Yeah. That's going to be really important. As quantum computers get more advanced. Absolutely. And companies like our kit and BTQ could see a lot of growth. Yeah, if they can deliver. But again, we got to be careful, do our research. Yeah, always. Okay, we've talked about a lot of companies. I have. Big ones, mid cap, and those high risk, low cap. The whole spectrum. So that's a pretty good overview of what's going on in quantum computing investing. I think so, yeah. But there's one company we haven't really dug into. Right. The one you're really interested in. Quantum Computing Inc., QUBT. QUBT. Let's look at their profile. Okay, so Simply Wall Say says they were founded in 2018. Right. 44 employees. CEO is Bill McGann. And their goal is to make quantum computing accessible and affordable. That's a big goal. It is. Especially with how complex and expensive this technology is. Yeah, it's a big challenge. But it seems like a lot of companies are trying to do that. They are. Make quantum computing more available. Okay, and how is QUBT trying to do that? Well, they're not just making software. Oh. They're also building quantum machines. Oh. And they're trying to make them portable, work at room temperature, mm. use less power. So they're trying to make it more practical for businesses? Exactly. Get it out of the lab and into the real world. Interesting. And their revenue is supposed to grow by like 115% a year. That's what the projections say. Wow. That's a lot of growth. Yeah. It shows that people believe in their approach. But we also have to look at their stock price. Yeah, it's been pretty volatile. How volatile? Up over a thousand percent in the past year. Whoa. That's a huge increase. That's a roller coaster. It is, yeah. So definitely not for the faint of heart. No, you gotta be able to handle those swings. Okay, so QUBT sounds really interesting, big potential. Yeah, definitely a compelling story. But before we get too excited, we gotta talk about the risks. Right. Every investment has risks. And QUBT is no exception. No, not at all. So let's look at those risks. Okay. What are the red flags? Well, one thing is shareholder dilution. Okay. What's that? So they've been issuing more shares, mm -hmm. and that can decrease the value of the shares that people already own. So it's like if you have a piece of pie, yeah. and they cut the pie into more slices, exactly. your slice gets smaller. Even though the pie is the same size. Okay. That makes sense. What else? Another thing is their revenue. Mm -hmm. It's still pretty small, less than a million dollars. Really? Yeah. Last year, it was only $386,000. Wow. And they're not making a profit yet. Okay. And they don't expect to be profitable for the next three years. So even though they're projected to grow a lot, yeah, they're still in the early stages Where? and haven't figured out how to make money yet. So that's a risk. Definitely. And of course, the stock price volatility. Yeah. That's a big one. Up over a thousand percent in a year. That's crazy. A lot of movement. So investors have to be really comfortable with that. Absolutely. you got to have a strong stomach. So QUBT, fascinating company. Yeah, really interesting. Big potential. But a lot of risk. A lot of risk. It's an investment that needs a lot of thought. For sure. you got to understand the company, the financials, and how volatile the market is. Okay, so we've given our listener a lot to think about. A lot of information. Okay, so we've given our listener, like, a toolkit, you know? Yeah, a quantum toolkit. To navigate this whole world. This exciting but risky world. Yeah, we've looked at those big companies. The ones kind of just testing the waters. Right, dipping their toes in. And those mid-cap companies, the ones really climbing the ladder. Yeah, the up-and-comers. And then those low-cap companies, like the real pioneers. The ones going where no one has gone before. Exactly. So from IBM and Google. The big names. To QUBT and Arquit. The more speculative ones. We've covered a lot. What? The tech the applications, and, of course, the money. The financial side of things. Now, it's really up to our listener to decide what they want to do. Yeah, what paths they want to take. We've given them the information, the analogies. The tools. Everything they need to make a good decision. Hopefully. But at the end of the day, it's their choice. Absolutely. Quantum computing is still new. Oh, yeah. Very early stages. But the potential is huge. It's undeniable. And just like with any new technology. They're going to be winners and losers. So the key is to stay informed understand the risks, and invest carefully. It's like a gold rush. 
It is. A lot of excitement, a lot of risk, and a lot of potential. And remember, QUBT, the company you're interested in. Right. Really interesting company. Yeah, they have a good story. Trying to make quantum computing accessible and affordable. A noble goal. And they're projected to grow a lot. Yeah, those revenue numbers are impressive. But their stock price is all over the place. Maybe. Very volatile. And their revenue is still pretty small. Yeah, they have a long way to go. And they're not profitable yet. Not even close. So it's a risky investment. For sure. But maybe a really rewarding one. Potentially. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah, I want to leave you with this thought, Excellent. this quantum computing revolution. It's just getting started. And these companies we talked about today. They're the pioneers. In a field that could change everything. Absolutely. It could transform industries. So stay curious. Keep learning. Do your research. And think about the possibilities. Who knows what the future holds? It's a journey worth taking. It is. And maybe you'll be a part of the next big breakthrough. The next quantum leap. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.